Hello, this is Gregory A. Wilson, author of Speculative Fiction of Various Kinds, The Third Sign, a work of epic fantasy, various short stories, articles for the Civil Bulletin, and the like, and also a college professor who teaches courses in fantasy, science fiction, and creative writing. And I want to talk a little bit about Bradley P. Bollier's work, The Flames of Shadam Korra, which is the third and final book in his trilogy, The Lays of Anaskaya. Um, I will admit to having a little bit of personal connection here because Brad and I are also the co-hosts of Speculate, the podcast for writers, readers, and fans. And so I've had the opportunity over the last couple of years to know directly how good Brad is at understanding aspects of writing in various disciplines, but of course, in particular, in the genre of fantasy and science fiction. Um, Brad's insight and intelligence is always something which impresses me. But one of the things that has been great is the chance to actually see how well he executes it in his work as well. And that's something that you've seen in each of the three books. Uh, When I first had a chance to read, I think, the manuscript, actually, of The Winds of Kalakovo, um, I was struck by how different it was from a lot of the stuff that was out there. You feel yourself being drawn into this world um, of uh, Russian wind ships almost. I think I mentioned in the blurb that I wrote for him that it was a little bit like what would happen if Anton Chekhov staged the three sisters aboard a wind ship. I was excited um, by the setting that he had invented and found that he really was able to carry it through so that you found yourself constantly in a different world, an unusual world, and a world that you wanted to explore. But a world really isn't worth anything, honestly, if you can't uh, execute what's in that world. And what Brad does is not only represent the world building, which is truly exceptional, but also manages to communicate the characters within it. And so we have Prince Nakandir, who uh, in many ways is a character who has the weight of the world on his shoulders, um, is a good man in difficult situations, and finds himself in some ways torn between the duchy that he's supposed to represent and uh, the other people that he finds himself growing closer to. People like uh, Atiana, for example, example, um, a wonderful female character, one of many female characters that Brad does exceptionally well, something which is not always the case with an epic fantasy. And then, of course, Nassim, uh, one of my favorite characters in the series, a character who um, at the beginning is almost autistic um, in the way that he interacts with the world because of his sensitivity to the spirit world that is outside the, the world that Brad has established. And in a lot of ways, those three characters working together um, really kind of carry the story. But there are so many good characters in this world and so many interesting ones that by the time I got to the end of the Winds of Kalakovo, it's kind of like, so when do we get the next part? You know, what's next? Uh, and that's when, of course, we led to the Straits of Galahesh, um, which was even better, if possible, than the first one, where Winds of Kalakovo was sort of establishing the world, establishing the characters. Here, the Straits of Galahesh gives them quite a bit of forward momentum. There was certainly a lot of action in the first book, but in the second book, you really begin to see the strands kind of coalescing around a central theme. And it was something which I found really interesting as I was going through watching as these characters develop over time. And then finally, the Flames of Shadow Korra, where really Brad kicks it up to the next level. And we're not dealing anymore just with a really interesting world, just with interesting characters, um, but we've really got a theme about the way that love can operate in this world, about the way that our world is not that different in some ways from the spirit world that surrounds us. And even though this is a world which, as I said, is very different and unusual, it nonetheless is a world which feels as if it could be real. If, you know, we took a left instead of a right, if things were a little bit different than the way that we imagined them, um, we could imagine ourselves stepping onto the deck of a wind ship and going along as they move forward in their adventures. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about the Flames of Shadow Korra was how satisfying a, a lot of these endings were, how many things were sort of tied up together. And the ending, which is something which a lot of people have commented already, is not something they expected, and I didn't expect it either. And that's after knowing Brad pretty well and you know thinking that I had an understanding about how he was going to bring things to a conclusion. There's a reason that Brad's career has done as well as he has, and it's because he not only works hard, but he really understands the importance of putting all of the pieces together. Exceptional world building, great character development, um, and and world that you feel you'd like to spend more time in, but most importantly, underpinning that with a thematic understanding of the way these things ought to operate. And his knowledge of theme and writing and world building is very impressive. It's something I learn from him every week when we do the show Speculate, and it's something which he clearly has executed in this book. So if you have not already done so, you need to make sure that you support his Kickstarter. If we're past the Kickstarter point already and you're watching this video afterwards, you need to make sure that you pre-order and or order 
this book. Um, it's really important, I think, that you read it from the beginning if you possibly can, because you'll get so much more enjoyment being able to see where all of the characters start from and where they end up by the time we get to the end of the series. But either way, each book, I think, The Winds of Kalakova was great, Straits of Galahesh was an improvement, uh, even on that, and really The Flames of Shadow Korra really ties it together and, as Brad himself says, kind of finishes the series up with a bang. So it has my highest recommendation, uh, both as an author and a college professor. This is the kind of thing that I'd love to be able to teach and discuss on a show like the one that we do, and it's something that I can learn from even within my own writing. And so I highly recommend it. If you have not already done so, please check out the book. And um, yeah, make sure that you check out all of the Lays of Anaskaya. Uh, but The Flames of Shadam Korra, his concluding book, which I've just read, is really, really good. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to enjoy it as much as I have. Thanks, everyone. And I'm um, glad I had the opportunity to do this because really great series, really great books. Bye-bye.